and a very strong show of support, the Ohio Senate unanimously passed with 33 votes the new two-year state budget. It now goes on to the House, but one thing it does besides providing really significant tax relief across the board to Ohio families and also small businesses, it also heavily invests in children's initiatives and organizations that are there to protect our most at-risk Oh, young Ohioans, and that's you. State Senator uh, Hottinger joins us right now, Jay Hottinger out of Newark. And this is really something that you've been passionate about, about making sure that we're investing in the youth of Ohio. And, and where would you like to start about what the budget does best here? Well, look, there are so many great initiatives that are in this bill. You know, John, a budget bill is a list of priorities. It's those issues that uh, really shows where your values are. And so the governor started off great by really investing in a number of, of children's initiatives. And we took a very strong uh, child-centric uh, children's initiatives-led uh, budget that was introduced by the governor, and we made it so much stronger uh, here in the House of, excuse me, both in the House of Representatives and now over here uh, in the Senate. And, uh, you know, one of, one of the big issues is uh, there are children out there uh, that have multiple needs uh, that are just really hard to deal with children in terms of some of the struggles and challenges that they have. They're, they're, they're labeled or known as multi-system youth. They're called that because not any one system is able to address all of their needs and their concerns. And so what we've seen over the course of time is, is that some families have to be, they have forced relinquishment of their custody, not because they want to, but because they don't have any other way to pay for the services that their children need. And that's a gut-wrenching decision that no parent should be forced to make, that their children need so, many, so much help, need so many uh, services, that they have to give up their children to be able to afford uh, those treatments. And so uh, we introduced both language uh, and dollars to prevent that from ever happening again in the state of Ohio. So we put in some important language, uh, but more importantly, or equally importantly, uh, $18 million uh, dedicated and earmarked specifically to these multi-system youth so that there's no longer going to be forced relinquishment of, of custody. We do see a lot of children who are now living with their grandparents because one parent or the other or sometimes both are struggling to get clean from the opioid epidemic or other types of drugs. There is also a significant investment regarding what's called kinship care. Absolutely. So uh, you, you hit on this, but 200,000 children in the state of Ohio right now live with a grandparent. Uh, that doesn't count other kin that they're living with. And so we restored funding uh, in the uh, Senate version of the budget, $15 million a year for kinship care, uh, also $3.5 million a year for the kinship care navigator program. It's very, very important that uh, when families and low-income families are, are taking on uh, children, that they have the help and the resources uh, to be able to do that. Children are best served more times than not with biological uh, family. And so uh, providing assistance and relief to low-income grandparents, again, 200,000 kids out there living with, uh, with a grandma or grandpa, uh, to be able to restore that money uh, is, is essential. And we know that K through 12 educators also have a big role in trying to not only educate but take care of our children as well and and no school district receives less money than they did last year also additional money to growing districts but really when it comes to wellness programs and, and mental health an additional half billion dollars being invested in k-12 through education in ohio well, absolutely again in this uh these wraparound services was kind of a concept that the that the governor introduced in his as introduced version you know looking at mental health issues and some after school issues and, and a, a number of services is really, really critical. You know, uh, when, when I talk about a budget being a list of priorities, um, a lot of times people forget that when you're looking at state GRF dollars, still it's the largest K through 12 funding is still the number one item uh, in the state budget. 44 cents out of every dollar goes specifically to K through 12 education. And John, I mean, look, the list goes on and on, whether it's in our investments in boys and girls clubs, investments into big brothers, big sisters, uh, investments into moms to be, which is trying to help moms and in, in the issue around uh, uh, infant mortality issues. Um, uh, Senator Coley and I worked on a bill, Senate Bill 6, that was uh, put into the bill, and that's to, uh, to because we believe in hope, we believe in second chances for families, and, and it allows for families to have alternatives to 
uh, foster care. Uh, those are some of the things we did. Uh, another important issue is the uh, uh, quality infrastructure grants that we did for uh, on early learning initiatives and trying to uh, help uh, some um, uh, uh, preschoolers and, and, and preschool program, getting them, you know, not only, you know, the early uh, health uh, needs met, but some of their early education needs, and then I think I, I think I think it's important also to recognize that in the Senate we provided an additional five million dollars a year to food banks. All the programming, all the help, all the assistance in the world that we're trying to do in this kid-centric, you know, pro-child uh, investments really goes out the door if a family or children is struggling with uh, food insecurities. And so even though we have a great economy right now, uh, there still are just some great challenges out there for families. And to be able to provide $5 million additional a year to the food banks to be able to make certain that there are food securities uh, at home for, for families and children is, is really essential. State Senator Jay Hottinger, thanks so much for your time and hard work. The budget now moves on to the Ohio House for what's called a conference committee to iron out whatever remaining differences there may be. And to follow and get the very latest on where the budget stands, make sure you tune into our social media channels. That's at Ohio Senate GOP. And on the web, it's ohiosenate.gov front slash Republicans. From the Ohio Senate, I'm John Fortney.